Happy NFL Draft Day to the NFL fans out there. Hopefully, you're an NFL fan if you're watching this video. But we have a lot to break down. Big day in the NFL. Big day for Madden Ultimate Team content that we're all going to break down. But we also are going to have at the end of this video my mock draft prediction. So stay tuned for that. By the time you guys are already seeing this video, this card should be in the game. But 99 overall, Aaron Rodgers LTD Jets Edition should be wearing number eight. Should go live in all packs and the NFL Draft rerolls thursday morning and then later on in the afternoon this is the whole nfl draft part two content the first round rookies are being put in the game it's going to be a staggered release but you can see the first five players get dropped in the game they will be revealed on these lovely streamers on twitch a few of them being really good friends of ours being k and Adam, that will again go live and go down as the picks happen live in the NFL Draft. And now to give you a brief summary of how the cards were put in the game last year, because it was a very similar structure, we got to go back to Madden 22. So first off, the only 99 overall was the first overall pick, and it required two 97 overall draft pass players for the sets. And then you had picks 2 through 10 were 98 overalls. They all required three 95 overall draft pass players. Once again, they come out probably 30 to 45 minutes after they are drafted. If I remember right, it went picks one, one through five was staggered, but then picks like five through 10, 10 through 15, all came out in little batches around 30 to 45 minutes after all those group of picks got taken. You know, it's EA Sports. You got to give them a little bit of time before they put them into the game. You had then picks 11 through 20 be 97 overalls. They require 295 overalls and 89 overall. In comparison this year, I would say that is 295s and 191 overall. If you want to compare Madden 22 to Madden 23 NFL draft pass content. And then you had picks 21 through 30, 32. Now, picks 21 through 32 were all 96 overall, but except for some reason, the 31st overall pick, Daxon Hill, was a 95 overall for some reason. I guess they expected him to be not picked in the first round. Um, and those required 393 overalls. Again, I expect all this stuff to be relatively the same. We have the same overall structure, except for 89 overalls with the NFL draft pass content. And now going into the NFL draft first round rookies. So what can you do to prepare for this content? Well, something we've been doing for the past few days, really for the past week or so since the content went live, I love 95 overall NFL draft pass players. You already saw back in Madden 22, the 95 overall cards were the ones that were used the most in those sets. We're not saying that is a guarantee for this year, but 95 overalls have the best insurance when it comes to an investment. You can pick them up right now for under 100,000 coins. The reason I say the best insurance is if 97 overalls are used, let's say the first five picks end up being 90, 99 overalls. Well, 97 overalls, really the best way to get them is still do, through doing the set, which is going to require 295s, 193, and a 91 overall. Now for 93 overalls, I would go out and buy quite a few of these. You can pick them up for 43 to 44k. It's really, really cheap training. It's a good price you are going to pay. If 93 overalls are heavily involved like they were last year, they will also most likely go up in price this night or, you know, Thursday night, this night. Um, so yeah, in general, 95 overall draft pass players are my favorite investment at under 100k. Pair them with some 93 overalls for 44k, and there's really no way you can go wrong with preparing for NFL Draft Pass Part or NFL Draft Part Two being the live rookies. 91 overalls you also don't really have to worry about because they are the most commonly pulled player in the reroll, so they, without a doubt, can't really go up that much because they'll just be spammed through rerolls. Another thing you could do on the market to prepare, and this really is more for golden tickets that we've been doing, but you never can go wrong buying training because we said. A lot of the NFL Draft Pass Part 1 players will be used for the first round rookies. And well, if the entire NFL Draft Pass market goes up because they're required within a multitude of sets for the first round rookies, well, that would mean training would gain value. So if you plan on opening rerolls for Aaron Rodgers, also the NFL rookies will be put into rerolls. At least that was a thing last year. They will be put into the rerolls. If you are planning on opening up rerolls tomorrow night or tonight, I keep saying tomorrow night, I'm recording this Wednesday night. Uh, but if you're if you're planning on opening up rerolls, make sure you get training. 97 overalls are probably your best bet. Uh, there's a reason my coins have gone from 285 mil to 215 mil, and that is I have been stocking up on training in preparation for not only this day, but for golden tickets in the weeks to come. But you can never go wrong buying training for very, very cheap. And one last thing, this really isn't on topic with the NFL Draft Pass content, but if you had invested in 94 overall weekly wildcards and you missed the window on selling them for 100,000 coins Tuesday morning, 
Don't worry, you can always just go do the 99 overall weekly wildcard sets. Pair the 94 overall cards you have in your binder with the 97 overall weekly wildcards, which are going to cost you around 205k. There are still a lot of 99 overall weekly wildcard sets that are really, really good to do that sell for above 750k. But now getting into my NFL mock draft, my predictors for the sets in Madden Ultimate Team. I'm only going to go through the top 14 picks and I don't claim to be an NFL draft mock draft expert. I claim to be. I'm really good at fantasy football. However, NFL mock draft, mock draft, draft analysis. I don't put a lot of time to it because I'm being honest. The Chiefs don't really ever have too many high draft picks. So I'm not really worrying about who we are going to take. But here is my mock draft. I am going out on a limb on some of these picks. I'm trying to go 14 for 14. I don't want to go 10 for 14, 11 for 14. I want to go 14 for 14. So I have some trades that really are going to have a domino effect on some of these picks. So, you know, uh, let me know down in the comments what your mock drafts are. What's your what's your lock of the draft for the top 14? But at number one for the Panthers, we're going to have Bryce Young. I also am throwing in a lot of Vegas odds for these. I used Vegas as well as, you know, some Twitter research to try to give my best mock draft. But Bryce Young at number one seems to be a lock for every single person. At two, I do have the Texans staying at defense. Will Anderson at pick number two. They've got D'Amico Ryans, you know, first year head coach, a defensive minded head coach. Uh, I don't think they love any of the quarterbacks available after Bryce Young and they go safe. They go Will Anderson, you know, to give that pass rusher for the Texans defense. At number three, a pick that some people think could be traded uh, with to take a QB, you know, from a, from a team later on in the draft. I have the Cardinals just sticking with Tyree Wilson, best player available. I know Kyler Murray wants Paris Johnson to be drafted to give him some more offensive tackle help and offensive line help. I say they go safe and go Tyree Wilson. Now at number four, and this really could be one of the three quarterbacks you never really know, but the Colts are almost a lock to take a quarterback. I have him going with Will Levis. That is the odds on favorite for them to draft the second quarterback taken. Uh, in this draft at the current time at number five uh, this one i think can shock some people i am playing it super safe it is the uh vegas odds like most likely pick to happen other than bryce young to the panthers it is jalen carter to the seahawks the interior defense alignment reminds me a lot of chris jones uh on my chiefs but i could see the seahawks being very aggressive here and taking a quarterback if they do like him uh, but i'm going with jalen carter for right now but i have the seahawks Slipping back into the top 14, we'll get to that eventually. Now, number six, I have my first trade of the top 14. I have the Lions trading back to the Titans at 11, and I have the Titans taking CJ Stroud. This is where Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, and CJ Stroud are all really interchangeable, at least in Madden Ultimate Team. We just got to predict the, uh, the quarterback, but I am going with CJ Stroud to the Titans at six. I don't know if they love CJ Stroud. But uh, they are in the market for a quarterback, and I really like the Lions trading back in the situation because they're more so targeting a defensive back, and there's a lot of options a little bit later in the draft. Now, at seven for the Raiders, this one, I know a lot of people have Anthony Richardson going to the Raiders, but I don't think Josh McDaniels wants a quarterback. I think if Josh McDaniels liked a quarterback or loved the quarterback, he would trade up and make sure he got his guy. So I have the Raiders going with the positional need of Christian Gonzalez at the cornerback position out of Oregon. Love Christian Gonzalez, probably my favorite DB prospect in this draft. Although, you know, just watched a little bit of film on Christian Gonzalez. Now at eight, this one probably is the one where I have no idea. I would want to have the Falcons trade back preferably, but I don't want to do too many trades in the first top or the top 10 picks because historically that has not been a thing. I have the Falcons going with Nolan Smith. I don't think Bijan Robinson gets taken in the top 14. Running backs, I think GMs have learned their lesson. No matter how good the running back is, even the Giants taking Saquon Barkley at number two those years ago. Really, really good running back. It just does not pay off because running backs aren't worth it in terms of money. They aren't really part of your long-term project. And while the Falcons aren't really in win-now mode, I don't see the running back being a likely spot. Uh, I can see the Falcons maybe trading back into 15 through 20, taking Bijan. But if they stay at eight, I'm just going to go safe and go with Nolan Smith. Uh, for right now, they could go quarterback, but I like Ritter a little bit too much. At number nine for the Bears, this one I think is very, very safe, at least on the mutt uh, scheme of things, just taking an offensive tackle or taking an offensive lineman for the position group. I have Paris Johnson for right now. Uh, could be, you know, one of the many offensive tackles slated to go in the top 15 picks. Here is where we get it gets a little bit tricky, a little bit interesting. At 10, the Eagles had the 10th pick, and I don't think there is any player that the Eagles are going to fall in love with at 10. And I have the Seahawks trading back into the top 10 
going from pick 20 to pick 10. Of course, there will be future picks uh, involved in the trade. I'm not really going through that. I have the Seahawks trading back into the top 10, and this is where they take Anthony Richardson. I think the Seahawks potentially could go with him at number five. The only thing is, I think they see Jalen Carter as a generational prospect. And you can say Jalen Carter, the overall best player in this draft from a talent perspective. They could love both prospects, and they just go with the safer option of a Jalen Carter. But if Anthony Richardson slips, like I do think he potentially can, uh, a trade up from, you know, 20 to 10 won't take that many assets. And, you know, they could, the Seahawks can really line up back-to-back -back drafts being really, really good with, you know, if they end up making this move and they love Anthony Richardson the way I think, I don't, I don't see Pete Carroll as a very patient guy. I think he's one to, you know, aim for the moon. And uh, I, I have him trading up and getting Anthony Richardson at number 11. Now this is where the Lions trade back. And I have him, I'm, I'm going to try to pronounce this right. It's either Devin or Devon Witherspoon from Illinois, the defensive back. This is why I kind of like where the Lions are drafting because they don't really need an edge player. They don't really need a quarterback, so you would say. Um, and they don't really need an offensive tackle. They have Taylor Decker. Uh, I believe he's still in the Lions and they have Panay Sewell. So the Lions trading back, I think, makes a lot of sense for them. And if they can get Devin Witherspoon or Devon Witherspoon um, at 11 or even Christian Gonzalez, if he slips to 11, I really, really like that from just a draft value perspective. And then 12, 13, 14, um, this is where you really start to get on the teams that are just going to have their guys. They're going to like their guys, their position groups. Um, I have Jackson Smith and Jigba to the Texans. They need a wide receiver, although they don't take a Q. Maybe they take a QB here, but to me, if they loved the quarterback in this draft, they would have taken one at two and not at 12. So I just have them going Jackson, Smith, and Jigba at 12. At 13 for the Packers, uh, I thought about this a lot. I think this is either wide receiver or off the tackle. I have not taken Darnell Wright, the tackle out of Tennessee for right now, but this one could easily be Jordan Addison. Uh, I, well, who's it? There's Zay Flowers, the other receiver, maybe the Quentin Johnston out of TCU, but I have not going tackle for right now they took christian watson last year backers aren't going to take a wide receiver you know in the top two or three rounds back-to-back -back years they want to give aaron Rodgers a weapon it would be really disrespectful to draft a, a wide receiver in the top 15 picks after trading aaron Rodgers away and then at 14 for the patriots i have peter skaronsky the tackle slash guard out of northwestern uh patriots really need help i feel like everywhere they could go wide receiver they could go tackle they go wedge you really never know what bill belichick is going to take but I'm playing it safe. I'm going with the offensive lineman, Peter Skaransky. And that rounds out my top 14 again. I'm not a draft expert, ex draft expert. I just more play the cards of positional needs on each team. I don't know which team likes each individual prospect. Uh, high or low on certain players. If there's medical history, we don't know, right? We are just fans. Uh, it, but again, when it comes to mutt, it doesn't really all that matter. Because unless you go 13 for 14 or 14 for 14, the draft rewards really, or the mock draft rewards, really are not that good. Like, they're not something to die over, right? You're not missing out on a golden ticket. You know, I think golden ticket was the thing last year you got, or I don't know if you got all 32, 32. But that is my mock draft. That is the NFL draft video. Comment if you have any questions. Like if you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new. And until next time, peace.